Hello, Broadway fans. It is our favorite time of year once again here in New York City. It is time to start putting out those first predictions for the 2024 Tony Awards. The season, spring season is in full swing. We have so many things opening uh, back to back to back over the course of March and April. And here to help me dish these musicals is my good friend, David Buchanan. And we got to start right away with some some breaking news for the best musical race, which is Illinois, uh, which is a massive hit dance musical at the Armory, is making the quickest transfer maybe ever uh, to a Broadway house. It's opening without any previews in order to get it in time uh, on the 24th, I believe, on a matinee uh, to swoop in there because they clearly think they have a shot at this. Uh, what do you make of this? Does this is this actually going to be a late in the game contender to win best musical? Yes. Um, full disclosure, I haven't seen it at the Armory. Um, you know, some lucky folks have already seen it. Uh, hopefully, we'll see it. You know, at the end, at the, as close to you know as close as possible to now, so we can make really strong predictions. But based on the word of mouth, and based on the source material, and based on the creatives behind it, I do think it's gonna make a strong play for certainly um, a heap of nominations. Um, too early for me to say if it's gonna be win competitive just because I haven't seen it, but it sounds like it's an incredibly strong show and will be a strong contender. What do you think? Yeah, I am I mean, they clearly think these are the same folks that moved uh, Sidney Brustein uh, in at the last second to try and capture some buzz, which they didn't win revival for that, uh, play revival, but they did get a, a Tony for a featured actress. Um, and so I think it's it's a crazy year because there is no juggernaut and clearly producers see this and they're like, let's move on it. Um, there's not a Hamilton. There's not a fun home or a band's visit that had become the clear favorite and will steamroll everything. So Illinois really has a chance. I mean, this album, uh, Sufjan Stevens, is really beloved. Uh, it's different than a normal musical because it is mostly a dance piece. There are live musicians and live singers there. But the only thing holding me back from thinking, is this going to win, is that it's a limited run. Um, I think it's, what did they announce, the end of August, maybe, or sometime in August? And that gives me a little bit pause, um, because I think there's something else going into the St. James afterwards in the fall. And in a year where there's so many, uh, I think this is the 15th new musical this season, there's so many new musicals. Uh, many of them already have sadly closed pre prematurely. Tony voters might want to back something with a win that has the chance to run for a while and say, like, here's our here's our blessing. You know, here's the best musical win, which can boost your box office. Um, so that's my my only hesitation. What does your lineup right now look like? Well, with this news, I'm switching things up a little bit. So I think I'm still pretty confident in three or four of the ones I had picked before the announcement. So I have tentatively Suffs in First, The Notebook, um, Here Lies Love, um, Lempika, and then now my fifth slot is between Hell's Kitchen and Illinois. Um, uh -huh. That means I only have one closed show getting in. Um, if we were talking prior to today, I probably would have had Days of Wine and Roses in because I think that's going to have strength in some other categories, but with another huge, buzzy musical coming in in the spring, I don't think I have room for two shows that will be closed. Um, what does your lineup look like? Yeah, the closed shows are really tough because um, there's two, I mean, there's several ones that have closed, but Here Lies Love and Days of Wine and Roses are certainly, I think, the most buzzed about, talked about of the closed productions. I still, I have The Notebook and Lempika, Suffs, Here Lies Love and Water for Elephants. And now I feel like no matter how I do this, it seems like I'm missing something because Hell's Kitchen has buzz behind it. Um, I know the Outsiders just started previews um, and a few reports from friends who are at the first uh, preview were very strong. Um, the music they released has sound great, uh, sounded great anyway. So, and now I'm trying to think, is there something I need to take out for Illinois? Um, so I, I may be taking something out for Illinois. Um, but I'm also thinking, you know, the golden rule of best musical, especially for winning best musical, uh, is to have an original score, mm -hmm. which, of course, Hell's Kitchen does not. I think Alicia Keys has written like three new songs, which won't be enough to qualify for score. And Illinois is uh, using Stephen's album. So 
I don't know what to do. I th I think, you know, the notebook kind of got really harsh reviews from certain critics. Um who I was kind of shocked at. Uh it was pretty pretty rough, but I feel like that's one that could be critic proof just because you know, look at what the the novel got sort of rough reviews to. The the movie was not widely embraced by critics and yet both of them their audience scores are massive. And I feel like a certain, you know, I didn't I confess I didn't never saw the movie. Sorry, uh, Rachel McAdams. And I never read the book because it didn't seem like something that would appeal to me. But I fell in love with the show. I thought it was beautiful storytelling. So I think that's one that could be like critic proof. Yeah. And then it seems like Lempika and Suffs, like Suffs has Hillary Clinton behind it, Malala behind it, a sort of important subject matter. Lempika seems like the kind of more adult fair that really might need the Tony's support to to sort of broaden their audience. Um, so I feel like those three feel pretty strong to me. I don't know. Do you, I feel like those are pretty strong at the top in my eyes. Yeah, um, I have to echo your comments on The Notebook. Um, similarly, I had never seen the film, never read the book, and was really moved by the production. And to your point about it being potentially critic proof, I think there is a lot of skepticism of how many of these kind of movie to musical, you know, adaptations are, are coming to Broadway. But if you haven't seen it, um, you know, I think they did a really nice artistic job of taking a, a really true theatrical vision for the piece. Um, they made some changes to the film in terms of the number of characters they have and the ages of the main characters. I mean, I thought it was really well done. Um, and I think it's so um, appealing to audiences, like you said, Sam, that it could be, you know, a top one or two contender for best musical. Um, and yeah. yeah, I agree on the other ones that you've kind of flagged as well as really being probably, you know, the safest in a season where it's hard to kind of say anything is safe, um, just because the volume is so great of shows coming in in the spring. But I think, you know, we can feel good about probably three of those five at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of volume, we haven't mentioned like even half the 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 lineup here of things that are hopeful. I, I mentioned briefly The Outsiders, which is, could certainly prove to be a big success at the end of the season. The Great Gatsby, um, which is rushing in there to be the first of the two Great Gatsby musicals that we're going to have. We don't know anything about that. That's opening on the last uh, day of eligibility after a paper mill run. Back to the Future is like the only uh, show from the first half of the musical from the first half of the season that's still running so if they want to you know back a a hit that's certainly there and um part of rock and roll the the Huey Lewis and the News musicals coming uh, at the end of the season too so it's it's packed to say the least um so any keep uh, let's move on to revival because I can't uh especially with Illinois this is going to change so often and, and so much I think as as these shows open uh throughout April uh, revival, I feel like I have a little bit more of a grasp on. I think we all, it's a little bit easier because there's a lot fewer contenders. I, I feel like I have Merrily We Roll Along and Cabaret out there at the top. Those feel like the two uh, big juggernauts. Merrily has already proven itself a juggernaut this season. And then I have the Who's Tommy and Gutenberg filling out this four slot category. What do you have? Yeah, I have the exact same four. I have Merrily out front. I think today it just announced that it recouped. So um, yeah, it did. it's a critic hit. It's an audience hit. It's a financial success. I do think it has a lot of the momentum. Although, you know, we'll see with Cabaret opening in April, it's going to, you know, it's it's going to be building that kind of acclaim um, right on time. So I think there is a race for for the award, but I think they're definitely both in for nominations without question. And then I have the same two filling out the category, the Who's Tommy? And Gutenberg, which I know Gutenberg closed, you know, a couple months ago, but that was such a buzzy show in terms of the the guests that they had. They always had such um, supremely good folks coming in, um, and the two performers, um, Josh and Andrew, you know, are, are so, such staples of theater that I feel like that, you know, is going to be a memory for for nominators. And yeah. yeah, I feel good about those four. I don't feel good about necessarily leaving the Wiz out, but you know, it hasn't started previews yet, so I, I haven't seen it. So we'll see you know, once that opens, how that shakes out. But that feels like a good four to me right now. Yeah, sight unseen for The Wiz. And that's, I we haven't had The Wiz on Broadway in a long time. So that's certainly like a favorite that people are looking forward to. Um, and 
spam a lot i feel like i have that i feel like there's actors who could get in for that i don't know i don't know if it's going to be as strong for best revival nomination unless there's the potential of a tie which i didn't i do think going back to best musical for a moment that's a category where we're going to have more than five nominations because of a tie when things are really spread out you know when there's not a consensus around just a few that's when the votes start to you know be really close to one another and we get those those ties and extra nominees in there so that's always a possibility to to think of um but i i feel i feel relatively confident uh until the whiz comes in and, and makes us rethink everything with with these four we mentioned um Let's move on to some of those those acting races. Uh, we were talking about Merrily, and I have out front, as do a lot of folks on Gold Derby, Jonathan Groff for lead actor in a musical. Um, my he's he's you know having his moment. I feel like after being such a Broadway baby and then having a ton of fame with both Hamilton and Frozen, he it now feels like his moment's happening a little bit. Um, I've filled out my category with Eddie Redmayne, Brian Darcy James, Chip Zion, and uh, Ali Lewis Borsky. Uh, I think I'm saying his last name wrong. My apologies. Um, what does yours look like? Very close. Um, I have Jonathan out front as well. Um, Eddie, Brian Darcy James, Chip, and then I have Ryan Vasquez for The Notebook. Um, oh, just yeah. a, a caveat to say, you know, I think we're kind of guessing on category placement. Yeah, uh, but the middle, the middle Noah and Ali um, do have a very prominent, you know, kind of um, stage presence and stage time throughout the, you know, entire musical. So if no, if um, if Ryan is in the lead actor, I think he he's in my fifth. I do think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ali is a good call for Tommy. I think um, that could very well happen. I just right now ha seeing the notebook, I think um, Ryan is is in my top five at the moment. Yeah, I just know Ali got such incredible mm. reviews for the Out of Town tryout. People have been similarly singing his praises here uh, as it enters previews. And it was a ca um, a character that has been nominated for the original. It was in feature, but I know they're aiming for for lead uh, placement this this go around. But it's it's tough because, I mean, Ryan is very char charismatic. If they do put the middle Noah and Ali's as lead, which... I have a hunch they will to sort of divide people up so they can get the most uh, acting nominations possible. He would be a, a great choice. He has a, you know, really big number. Um, but I don't know. There's some people further down, like, there's people, you know, who are multiple, there's shows that have multiple nominations per per show, like Spamalot, if, you know, precedent sticks, then they'll have three lead actor potentials there. Um, similarly, Gutenberg, Josh Gad, and Andrew Randall seem like they really should be nominees. Uh, but is there enough room for both? Because I don't know that I would be able to pick between them if I was yeah. filling out my ballot, you know? I agree. Uh, yeah. That's why I don't have either in, just because I don't know which one of the two I would put. Um, and, you know, it's not unprecedented to get two lead actors from the same show in. It, you know, it wouldn't be the first time in history, but. You know, it's not it's not that common either. So in such a crowded year, I just don't know which one I would slot in. And I I don't think I can find room for, for both of them. Yeah, it's tough when there's this many potential nominees. Um, in other years where it happens, it's usually either because it's the show of the season or there's less competition uh, in the category. So it's easier to get those two in. I will also say I know... Um, a lot of people have been commenting. I haven't seen The Outsiders yet. I'm seeing it uh, sometime. I mean, in a few days, I can't keep track of my Broadway schedule this spring uh, without looking directly at my calendar. But um, Brody Grant, mm. uh, I understand, has a huge role as Pony Boy, and he could kind of be, you know, the newcomer that manages to get in. Um, right now, I have Ali in that that slot uh in my lineup but that could easily go to Brody Grant as well if the outsiders catches on um speaking of newcomers uh I'm I'm putting that slot um for Joy Woods in lead actress in a musical I think she's you know that star on the rise type person 
uh, who everyone is watching and the Tony's <clears throat> Tony voters usually go and solidify them uh, in the industry with a nomination. So for lead actress in a musical, I have Eden Espinosa making her grand return uh, out front and then Gail Rankin for Cabaret, Kelly O'Hara, Days of Wine and Roses, Joy Woods, The Notebook, and I'm very unclear on slot number five, but I'm going with Shayna Tubb for Suffs for now. Yeah, um, I have, again, four of your five. Um, I have Eden Espinosa. I have Kelly O'Hara, Kelly O'Hara, who I think, um, you know, had Wine and Roses continued to run through voting and through the Tonys, you know, would be in contention to win. I think the fact that it's closing at the end of March weakens her chances for a win. Um, not for a nomination, though. I think that's pretty strong. Um, yeah. I have Gail. I have Joy Woods. Just to your point, Sam, she has such a great solo in Act Two such a rallying kind of song um, and such as you, as you call them, like a Tony moment um, yeah. that I, I think she's definitely in if she's placed in, in this category. And then I'm kind of, I'm totally kind of split on that fifth slot. I could see um, Shayna Taub getting in. Um, she's going to get nominations elsewhere. So, you know, it's very possible she gets a nomination here. Um, even though Bolzada is really beloved in the industry and then uh, Malia Joy Moon for Hell's Kitchen, depending on, I didn't see Hell's Kitchen, but depending on how that's received once it comes to Broadway, um, you know, she could be another one of those up and comers that, you know, grabs the spotlight in the category. Yeah, Malia is the one I'm most worried about not having in my lineup because yeah. she seems similar to Joy Woods, seems like that type of nomination that they go for. Um, and did, she did get excellent you know, excellent notices for the public. And uh, I think they're going to push her really hard because, you know, it's like, this is who Alicia Key has handpicked herself to play a pseudo version of herself in this musical. Um, I do feel, I feel very confident, you know, about Eden, Gail, and Kelly. Mm -hmm. um, I know two of those women are sight unseen right now. Uh, I'll see Olympica soon, but I feel like there's such anticipation over her return to Broadway. It's been, I think, well over a decade, maybe since I think she was in Wicked in 2006. So it's been quite some time since we've seen her and uh, a lot of people are looking forward to that. And Sally Bowles is a great character for someone like Gail Rankin to to really break out with. Um, and I will say, Nichelle Lewis, if The Wiz turns into a big hit, or if Water for Elephants turns into a big hit, uh, we have to see how those kind of land with folks. Michelle Lewis or Isabel McCullough could could sneak in at the end. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for them. Um, let's see, we have, let's move on to, which one do we want to do first? Let's end with the featured performers and let's uh, let's move on to director of a musical. So this is another one where I have, I have two that feel really solid. Mm. Maria Friedman, Merrily We Roll Along, Rebecca Frecknell for Cabaret. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the whole narrative with Merrily is like, Maria Friedman fixed Merrily We Roll Along. That's all people keep saying, right? Um, his sometimes problematic show that she fixed. So she seems in, the, in there directing the biggest hit of the season. We are hoping Cabaret also turns out to be a big hit of the season, but Rebecca Frecknell has like a massive uh, concept for this reconstructing the theater to sort of do it in the round-ish to copy the way that they performed it in London. And then I have Rachel Chavkin for Limpica, Alex Timbers, Here Lies Love, and a shared nomination, Michael Greif and Shelley Williams for The Notebook. What does yours look like? Are we far off? No, we are either four for five or five for five because I'm <clears throat> debating that fifth slot. So I have the exact same top four, Merrily Cabaret, Lempica, Here Lies Love. I think um, The Notebook could get into directing, not only because, as I said before, there is such a unique kind of directorial vision for the production, mm -hmm. uh, but also Michael Greif, you know, has so many shows, you know, three three musicals opening this year on Broadway that you know, it would feel surprising if they didn't nominate him s somehow for this season. I don't think it's going to be for Wine and Roses. Um, so it's either this or for Hell's Kitchen. And, you know, I just think The Notebook is going to be, at least right now, I feel like it's going to be a stronger contender. Um, the only other things I'm looking at, um, 
I, I think I have in my official five on Gold Derby right now, Lee Silverman for Suffs. Um, if I think that's out front for best musical or a top two or three contender, I'd be surprised if she didn't get in, but that's also yeah. been seen for me. I, I didn't see the, um, you know, the, the kind of tryout run of the show. Um, and then I'm wondering with Illinois, you know, Justin Peck, mm -hmm. is it, is he going to get in for director and choreography? Are they going to, do they know it's this, you know, he's doing both. So they'll acknowledge him in choreography and not in directing. That's my biggest question mark on the category. Uh, yeah, Justin Peck is hard. I definitely have him penciled in for choreography. Is he going to get in director? I don't know. I feel like, you know, you mentioned Michael Greif, who has three uh, new three new musicals this season, which is insanely uh, impressive and way more ambitious than, than most people could, could tackle. But Shelley Williams, his uh, co-director for The Notebook, has two with The Wiz. And I believe she is the first Black woman in 50 years uh, or something like that to direct a musical on Broadway. Um, and she has two. And this just feels like these two directors that everyone loves have multiple projects this year. Well, here's one mm -hmm. great opportunity to, to recognize them both and kind of take care of them both in one fell swoop. Yeah. So that's why even if, you know, The Notebook is not our front runner for best musical um, or even falls out of the top five for best musical, there's something about that nomination that feels right to me. Um, the other one I'm really thinking of, again, I have to see this uh, in order to to really make a statement, but I know a lot of people have loved Daniel Tamor's work uh, throughout the years. And so if The Outsider gets good notices and a good audience response, then I feel like she is someone uh, who could sneak up here in the rankings. She's kind of in like... I don't know. She, her, Dania Tamor and uh, Lee Silverman are kind of the ones hovering right outside of the top five for me. Uh, if one of the main five I have falters and I feel like I have them. It's hard to know Illinois because that just happened, but I feel like I would even rank them over Justin Peck at the moment. Yeah, because I feel like Justin Peck's so guaranteed yes. in choreography, um, <clears throat> which let's talk about <laughs> since we since we have that in there. Uh, Justin Peck, I think, is obviously out front for choreography with this move for Illinois. But I also have The Wiz, Hell's Kitchen, The Who's Tommy, uh, and a special nomination for Once Upon a One More Time. <laughs> and I just moved uh, Water for Elephants out to put Illinois in, which is risky because we don't know the determinations yet, but Water for Elephants, they could determine that the circus choreographers could be eligible and in that case that makes that show a huge threat for this category but I feel like Illinois is out front at the moment what do you think I agree so my five before the announcement of Illinois were very similar to yours um, I have the Wiz, Cabaret, Hell's Kitchen, uh, the Who's Tommy and I put the Outsiders I haven't seen the Outsiders yeah. but it I from what I've read and heard it's such an athletic show um, all of that ensemble cast does so much work in that. So I, I, I imagine that will be appealing for a nomination here. Um, which one do I, I know I have to drop one of these five for Illinois because I think that is guaranteed a nomination and it's a front runner. So, you know, maybe I drop the outsiders right now, um, sight unseen, you know, I, I'm not confident in that pick, but, um, I feel okay about the other, the other choices. I think the, what you flagged about water for elephants is a great point. Um, I haven't seen that either yet, but if they kind of take the entire production um, into consideration when determining, you know, the choreography, that could be a huge determining factor. Yeah, I I also feel like Once Upon a One More Time is a bit of a gamble, I know, because it's not necessarily like highbrow, uh, you know, snobby artistic fair. It's a Britney Spears musical. But that being said, the choreography was out of control, like so mm -hmm. many numbers were these huge dance focused showstoppers big broadway showstoppers back to back to back um so i feel like if there is a space to remember that show this might be actually the most likely place i don't think once upon one more time is gonna be a huge uh you know earn a huge nomination tally by any chance but um this is a place where it could show up but that does mean I don't have Here Lies Love in there, which was another closed show. And the whole thing is about dancing. And it's like doing it uh, immersively. 
all around the audience. Uh, that could be one that is remembered for for its choreography as well. And I guess I don't have cabaret in, which could also be a mistake. Um, but I have to see how they've how they've staged this new production. Um, I'm trying to look down the list. Is there anything else we don't know? Like Great Gatsby, I think does have a pretty large cast, so that that could be a, a big song and dance uh, extravaganza that gets in. But I don't know enough about that one to to predict it yet. Um, so that'll be a game time decision when it opens on the last day of eligibility. Um, since I mentioned uh, the beloved Britney Spears musical, I'm going to head to featured actress in a musical because I just took someone out from that show who I kind of am hoping gets in, which is national treasure Jennifer Simard. Um, and I mentioned showstoppers before. Toxic is it remains to me uh, one of the best numbers of the season. I wouldn't say the show is like my favorite show of the season, but that like Jennifer Samard can do nothing wrong. She's just uh, always outstanding. Does she have a shot here for you? Do you think she she has a shot of getting in? I wouldn't rule her out just because a reminder that the Tony nominating pool is very small. It's usually about four dozen or less folks um, and they have to see everything. So if enough yep. of those people, you know, have that song top of mind still and is a highlight of their season, there is absolutely no reason why she can't get nominated for it. Um, other than the fact that there's just so many contenders, that's that's my buzzword of the of our mm -hmm. song. It's just the volume is so huge this season that there are so many names. Now she is beloved in the industry, no question, and she's a Tony nominee, you know, a couple of times over for shows that similarly, you know, didn't have a long life or weren't, you know, a best best musical or best revival. So she's definitely on their radar. Um, I just don't know, given how many other strong, you know, performers are in this lineup, if that's going to happen. Well, since I took her out, my um, I'm I'm hoping I'm wrong. I might switch her back in. We'll see how the chips fall as we go. But my lineup, I have Marianne Plunkett out front, who regardless of what they do, you know, who is leader featured from the notebook, she will be nominated wherever she winds up. Uh, I think she'll be one of the most talked about performers of the season. So I have Marianne, Lindsay Mendez for Merrily We Roll Along, Leslie Kritzer for Spamalot, Bibi Newirth for Cabaret, and Keisha Lewis for Hell's Kitchen. Do you match up at all? Yeah, four for five again. That seems to be our, uh, our, our running hit rate. So very in sync. I have um, Lindsay Mendez out front right now. Um, I do think Marianne Plunkett, who I also have, if she's if she's nominated in this category, uh, considered in this category, um, I think she has huge win potential. She is kind of the heart and soul of that musical. She's on stage so much of the time. Um, I think she's really brilliant in it. Um, but I have Lindsay out front, Marianne. I have B.B. Newworth. I have Leslie Rodriguez Kritzer. And then I put, now I think um, Lempika just started previews last night. So mm -hmm. I haven't read a lot about it yet and I haven't seen it yet, obviously, but I have Beth Level in here too, just because um, I've heard that she has a really huge kind of show-stopping number and she's so beloved in the industry. Um, you know, I, I would see her in absolutely anything that she does. So, you know, that's my five right now, but I do think of the five, you know, we'll see where Marianne Plunkett is placed. Um, and we'll see, you know, maybe when I see Lempika, I might, you know, change out that fifth slot. But I feel pretty good about two or three of those contenders right now. Yeah. And on your point about Beth Level, who's obviously a past winner, so should be taken seriously here. I've also heard Amber Iman from Lempika mm -hmm. has even more material than her. So yeah. she's someone who I think is a bit further down in our odds on Gold Derby, who should probably be yeah. a lot higher. Um and similarly, I have Keisha Lewis for Hell's Kitchen because I, I feel like she got the most notices, but Shoshana Bean is also a beloved Broadway figure. And if Hell's Kitchen turns into something really strong, then perhaps both of them could get in. Yeah. Um, but the main thing concerning me is that I don't have anyone from Suffs. I know. Which is the <laughs> all-female cast. And if that feels like a mistake, like one of at least one of them is going to make it in. I think from off Broadway, and I know this has been, uh, you know, there's been a lot of rewrites and, and work done to it, but 
off Broadway, I feel like everyone was talking about Nikki M. James the most uh, in my circle. So that's who I would sort of push out the furthest. I don't know. Is there a Seth's woman who you think could break in? I don't know. I think that's a good call based on what we know. I haven't, I didn't see Suffs um, off Broadway, so I, I don't know. But, you know, I just want to flag too, like past Tony nominee, Jen Colella. Um, you know, it mm -hmm. is great. It is a great ensemble cast. So when we see it, we'll know more about who's most prominent, who has those show-stopping songs, but just uh, an embarrassment of riches in this, in this category, just from the Suffs cast, cast alone, let alone all these other wonderful performers we're talking about. Yeah. Um, well, I can't figure that out. So let's move to featured actor in a musical here, um, where most people uh, have Daniel Radcliffe out front, myself included, in a crazy turn of events because Daniel Radcliffe has shown up on Broadway so many times, turned in performances the audience loved, sold out the house every time. Uh, he's sung, he's danced, he's gotten naked, he has done everything under the sun and never gotten a Tony nomination. Uh, so I'm nervous to put him out front because he's never even been nominated before, despite, in my opinion, deserving it. But I feel like this feels like the perfect, I don't know how they can ignore him for this. Do you agree? Yeah, it feels undeniable um, this time around. And, you know, probably there's been other occasions where we thought he was definitely going to get nominated, if not win competitive, and it didn't happen. But this time, this production, this role, Franklin Shepard, Inc., I mean, you know, and that's so early in the show, just such a standout moment. I can't fathom that he doesn't get nominated for it. And I think he is, I don't know about far out front to win, but for me right now, he's definitely out front to win. Yeah, it's a very fluid, I think this is the most fluid acting category mm -hmm. by far. Um, I could change all of the men I have out for different people by the end of the season um but my lineup right below daniel radcliffe i have another uh gentleman who has gotten great reviews has sung has danced has gotten dramatic has gotten naked and still never gotten a tony nomination which is paul alexander nolan um who i couldn't believe was not recognized for slave play uh definitely deserved to join his castmates there and i think has a kind of juicy villainous role in water for elephants and dorian harewood for the notebook below him i think he is way too far down in our odds uh so if you want maybe a surefire nominee at a, a very high odds go grab him uh andrew Samonsky and in lempika and conrad rickamora as the uh, i think the only actor i'm predicting from here lies love okay we're we're pretty close again so i have daniel i have conrad i have paul i have dorian i just want to echo what you're saying about um, him and why he's so far down in the odds. I mean, he has the opening number of, of The Notebook. He has so many beautiful moments and he's on stage almost entirely with Marianne Plunkett, who's giving one of the best performances of the spring so far. So if you're voting for Marianne Plunkett, I don't see how you're not also, you know, voting for, for him. So I have him in. I think that's a great call. And then I have Roger Bart for Back to the Future. We haven't talked a lot about that mm -hmm. just because you know we're not talking about the de the design categories and i think it will do well in a lot of those categories um and i think if there's going to be an actor from the show he has the standout you know featured role um and he's so beloved too in the industry that i could see him being a threat for a nomination here i will counter that and say while i love roger bart i think the one who got an olivier nomination and I think does an incredible job in that musical is Hugh Coles, mm. uh, who mm. plays the the dad Crispin Glover's role from the movie and does, uh, I mean, so much of that show is recreating moments from the movie, but he is able to recreate a lot of Crispin Glover's very uh, specific idiosyncrasies mm. uh, while still putting his own spin on it. It's a highly physical role. So I feel like both him and Roger Bart are um, definite. And Hugh Coles, uh, he's, you know, not as famous as Roger Bart, certainly. So he's further down in our odds, but definitely should be up there. Mm. Um, the other one I feel like I will take someone out to put in very soon is Stephen Skybell for Cabaret. Uh, Herr Schultz and Fräulein Schneider, I believe, are the only two characters from Cabaret who have been nominated every single production on Broadway. Sally Bowles has missed before and um, 
other characters have missed before, but those two haven't. And that uh, I don't know if that's is this one going to break that precedent. I'm not sure. I think it's going to be popular enough to get all the actors in. So I'd have to figure out who will fall out for Stephen Skybell. Um, and if they're feeling really, you know, generous to go back to a closed show, I don't think How to Dance in Ohio will be a huge nomination getter. But Liam Pierce had a great uh, performance, and I think he has the best song in that show uh, and is probably, I would argue, the most central figure in the show. And they put the entire cast in featured. So I would say he has the best chance there. Um, and then there's a whole slew of people that we don't know about. <laughs> so if you're looking to take a guess on people, go for those. Because uh, we have Brandon Victor Dixon, we haven't mentioned, from Hell's Kitchen, who's very beloved in the industry. Uh, Atu Blanks and Wood for Cabaret, if that turns into a big success. A nominee for Slave Play. It could be a Slave Play reunion for him and uh, Paul Nolan. Um, we don't know how big of a role people have in The Great Gatsby, so Noah J. Ricketts could be capitalizing on the, you know, goodwill and notices he has for the Fellow Travelers mm -hmm. limited series. Um, and there's a lot of people, like Danny Kornfeld was great in Harmony. There's a lot of really great performances further down here, not to mention the Illinois men who I keep like we just added another musical so there's also you know the dancers from Illinois uh like Ricky Ubeda uh who you know maybe they'll they'll dive into that sometimes those types of of roles get nominated who's like is there anyone from like the 100 to 1 odds section in our site that you're looking at as a potential well you've added you've talked about so many great folks that we should be paying attention to. I would just also flag um, some of the Spamalot guys too. Um, depending on how much they, you know, remember and like that production, there are past Tony nominees here, like Ethan Slater. He's um, he's on the cusp of having better odds. He's at 100 to 1. He's in 12th in our prediction center right now. Um, I'm also just curious, you know, we'll see what the eligibility looks like for the outsiders when we see the outsiders. Oh my God, yeah. That's such a huge ensemble show. You know, there could be a standout performer in that in that mix. Um, it's overwhelming, uh, but very exciting because, as you said, I think this is a category that's most kind of up in the air in terms of, you know, who we're going to land on in terms of our top five. Yeah, I basically feel confident about Daniel Radcliffe and then not anyone else, <laughs> which is very scary because Daniel has uh, I felt confident about him before and been, you know, slapped down each time by the Tony nominators. So we'll see what happens. This is this race uh, is going to change quite a lot uh, as we have so many, so many musicals opening in quick succession. So, David, thank you for running it down with me and make sure you go keep track as the shows open and log those predictions as the race stays in flux. Mm -hmm.